All right, so this is the No Bullshift podcast, which is kind of a play on words. It's uh, Can I say I'm bullshit? To, yeah, I'm trying to get a no bullshit look into the entrepreneur's life. Are you There's nervous? So much. Am are you, I nervous? Are you nervous? No. Should okay, I be? Good. No, no, no. I'm just, <laughs> just, it's, it's, it's a prosper thing to do because you went in on your spill. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm a marketer. I already heard the spill coming in and so i needed to break that stance it's just me it's just me <laughs> yeah well, <laughs> now, the, uh, now say it again all right so so yeah no it's just a podcast where i'm trying to get the no bullshit look into an entrepreneur's life because there's so much fake crap i see out there within you know the way people market and everything and so many people just try to be a carbon copy of ty lopez with you know showing the exotic cars and the beaches and the, all these fancy houses and expect you know kind of what you went into earlier today on your uh live stream about how you know people they'll say like you can do this one thing and then that's expecting you can do the same exact thing and get the same result when it's not going to work that way you know it's yes exactly <laughs> i love that live stream and that was a great analogy and that's exactly it so i'm trying to cut through all that crap and just kind of get the real story as well as you know get some cool insights from different entrepreneurs and people and uh, see if I can offer some good insight and mindset shifting uh, insights to other people that listen. Wow. Bruh, I cannot tell you, in our, in our age right now, let me tell you what's happening. Everybody else has gotten so lazy because we are now living in an on-demand society. So people just expect that if you plug something in, it automatically spits out a result. It automatically spits out whatever you've said it comes out to. Today, exactly. in the morning, I just saw my little girl take me out of a job. I'm going to explain <laughs> to you again. My little girl actually fired me from work today. She skipped an ad while watching Peppa Pig. <laughs> now, how am I supposed to make? How, how am I supposed yeah. to make money, bro? My exactly. little girl, she cannot talk. She cannot sing. She does nothing for herself. I clean her diapers, and she's cutting me from the source. Now, can you imagine how many other people are doing the same? If we're not doing much, did, did exactly. you get what I mean? There, yeah. I'm living with a terrorist in this house and I'm feeding it. <laughs> that's, that's a great <laughs> point. Yeah. Yeah. Now, can you imagine all the other ones out there? Yeah, no, exactly. I so mean, we, people want to get directly agile, to what they want. Yeah. We gotta be agile. It's, yeah. it's no longer a plug and play society, man. We now gotta go it's cut through the maze. Those little fingers are like, mommy, daddy, do. Yep. And they're nipping, <laughs> you know, <laughs> just like that. Yeah, no, they bro, you right got to kids, what they man. want. Yeah, oh, yeah, you got kids, man. And then, and then there you're like, yeah, I'm Chance the Rapper. I'll put your ads on YouTube. While your kids are literally not watching Skipping the ads. Skipping right past it. Yeah. yeah. They don't so, want to see the ads. It's called ad fatigue. All right. So if, if mm -hmm. people that don't even know what it's meant to be, don't even comprehend what it is now, we, we, we've got to step up. We've got to do something else. We got to move. Yeah. On. We haven't started the show yet, have we? <laughs> 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 you know what? You can put this in the show because it's as raw as it comes. Yeah. But this is exactly, um, this is exactly what I'm seeing, man. And it's not easy, bro. Yeah. You know? Every day I'm waking up, I'm hoping some guy hasn't taken away my job with like an app or like a software or like a SaaS. Now my own kid, bro. <laughs> Where do I go? Uh, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a marketer. Get me out of here. You know, yeah. you, you've got to put out content that supersedes the, you know, instant sort of gratification that people are now expecting. Yes. You know? No, that's, you hit it right, right there on the head. I mean, it's. You got to constantly be changing. It's not, you can't just see what's working for somebody else. You can keep that in mind, but implementing the same thing is not going to work for you. Yeah. And I like what you're doing there because you know what, 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 what you're just creating. This is content that is going to, first of all, it might not be watched by people in our day and age, 
But can you imagine all the little aliens that are going to come up in the future going, let's watch what <laughs> these guys were doing, you know, in the past. And then all of a sudden, you know, Chance the Rapper's, you know, um, I mean, Chance the Rapper Entrepreneur's video comes up and, oh, oh my God, there's this guy who's just talking bull crap. But at the yeah. end of the day, this, this is it. If you're not creating and relating to the people that are within the industry and creating partnerships that could help you leverage what they have or whatever audience they might have, yeah. And I think you're playing with yourself, you know, because at the end of the day, if, 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 if your audience is going to watch this and then maybe be entertained or educated at the same time, do you know what I mean? And then my audience yeah. is going to be like, oh, what is he up to now as well? Constantly, you're building your brand equity, your personal brand in as much as it's no longer about fighting or saying just because we are in the same field. I don't want to talk to this guy. You know why? He might yeah. steal my clients. You know, they're <laughs> never your clients. They're never where they exactly. never will be. Unless you're Donald Trump and you grab them by the, you know, <laughs> toe, toe at them. <laughs> yeah. You know, so if you really, really look at it, man, all, all we really got to do is we've got, all we have is our, ourselves. All we have is us. What are we doing to create and relate to the people that are actually going to be paying us with their credit card? Yeah. You know? No, I, I agree 100%. I mean, it's, and, and that's the, the whole thing behind this. I mean, you can't be scared to reach out and connect with other people, you know, do these videos like this, these podcasts, uh, do live streams with other people. You can't be worried about, oh, they're going to take my clients or, uh, what if I take some of theirs? I don't want to step on any toes. It's exactly what you said. It's you just put out the content, provide value. And those that are drawn to your message and what you're providing are going to come to you. It's you don't own anybody. Oh, you may, unless you're Trump and maybe you put a wall on them and then you know, <laughs> hold them in. And, and I feel like maybe groups are doing the same. I, I hate being put in a contained environment. Um, yeah unless I'm instigating it, but I'm not intimate enough to make sure that everybody's well looked after. So I feel like, you know, if you're going to create a group or if you're going to create your customers or some sort of community around you, you got to be present for them, man. You got to be there because you know what? People are coming to the internet to get information. And if your brand is the one that's providing that information, they get to know, like, and trust you. And when they do know, like, and trust you, what happens? Chance the rapper. Do, do you know what I mean? Exactly. You know, yeah. People do business with you. And, and once you start creating that feel of, I think this guy can help me or you can actually help them by actually helping them. You know what that does chance. It then creates a feel of them wanting more because people have pain wherever they are, man. It could be yeah. pain of not making money within their business. It could be a pain of struggle. Struggle is real, bruh. Right now, you've got a five-year-old and a one-year-old. If they start fighting and pulling each other's hair, you, you jump from there, <laughs> right? Wouldn't you? And that's yeah. a struggle, you know? But do you factor that in into your ad and say, sorry, I wrote a mis I, I, spelt, I misspelled this because at the time I was writing this, my little girl was playing with a knife and the other one was running with the scissors. <laughs> I had to quickly jump. Nobody cares, yeah. you know? So, yeah, so exactly. They... You know, you also got to incorporate that people are people. And if you're not becoming that person where they can actually come back for information, for solace, to belong, you know, to be shown the way for clarity, for just happiness, because that's what people are seeking. And if your brand is providing that through content, um, you know, what we're doing right now, you know, just yeah. sitting around, hanging around on your shore. Th thanks for inviting me, by the way. Oh, I'm absolutely uh, ecstatic to have you on, man. I love all your live streams that you do. I love the content that you put out. And uh, I believe it was my first podcast episode that I did with a mutual friend that we have on Facebook that I've actually known in uh, real life. He's a childhood friend of mine, uh, Corey Owens. I actually told him you, you were one of the first few guests I wanted to try and get on here because I was a fan of all your live streams and everything. So it's an honor for me to have you on here, man. Oh, thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you so much. So who do I send the bill for this show? Yeah. <laughs> you can send it to Corey, our mutual friend. 
<laughs> Good stuff. Yeah, man. <laughs> cool. Now, but at the end of the day, this, 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 I think your no bullshit show should like you trying to educate people, right? And it's content, it's fun. Yeah. And I think that's where it's all going to because the whole hustle, hustle, hustle is what do you think about that? I think it's a little bit overrated. You should hustle, but with emotion. You know what I mean? You should hustle yes. and know that there's bills to pay. You should hustle and know that there's hugs to give because it yes. doesn't mean that if my daughter walks in there, I'm literally just going to be like, you know, concentrated on you because this is the reason why we actually do what we're doing it for the people that matter the most in our lives, you know? So, I mean, you're a family man and you've got one again on the way. If we don't get to see you, don't feel um, obligated to come and show up while your kid is crying over there. You know why? Because we would yeah. actually look at you in a totally different light if we see that happening. Yeah. You know? I mean, it's you can hustle all day long, but no matter how big of a business you build, what does it really matter at the end of the day if your child doesn't really know who you are? I mean, if you've been neglecting your child for your business, that's says a lot about your priorities. Oh, uh, you, you, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna enjoy this. Just watch this. Oh, I don't know if I can get this. Look. That's my little girl. She was doodling <laughs> over here while I was busy trying to, you know, create stuff. I think she's playing around um, somewhere there. And what you then find is, have you, I'll bring you back to something real quick. Okay. Yeah. People are really trying to be somebody they're not. And, and it shows. Okay. And then you now have a scenario where have you ever watched sitcoms like uh, Fresh Prince of Ballet, uh, Martin, yeah. all those other older sort of series like Seinfeld, all those other yeah. shows. Have you ever heard of the person who was not the main character of them actually doing well in life or they have checked into some sort of rehab or they've checked into some sort of um, mental institute or something of that nature, or they've just gone berserk, dilapidated, etc. You know why that is? The reason why that is happening a lot is because that person was acting and was taking a character and a persona that they were not. Yeah. All right. Will Smith is doing it right. You know why? Because he was acting himself. He did not have to be another person. Seinfeld yeah. is still doing it right. He's doing his show, whatever, whatever. But yeah. all the other guys are <laughs> checked into some sort of mental institute. So yes. when you have to become another character, you stop being who you are. And when, and when your beingness does not align to who you are, first, what you say, what you do is not corresponding. And your body starts deteriorating because it's not at ease. And that's why you now get disease, you know? So if you are an entrepreneur and you're not actually doing you, being you, speaking in your own voice, bringing out your own content and attracting people that are not yourself, you will go beside yourself and you will check into some sort of rehab. It all, it's only a matter of time. The reason is the internet just keeps giving, 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 giving. And if you're not yourself, you keep latching onto things that are not yours. Then you become that sitcom actor that has to become a character. By the time that sitcom ends, what happens? They have to go back to their old self now. Yep. Now they don't understand that guy because they haven't been that guy for 15 years. Yeah. And there's a disconnect. And guess what? It's a matter of us just swiping right and moving yeah. on. <laughs> you know what I mean? What exactly. was that 15 years all about? You know? No, it's a, a huge point. I mean, you've got to, before you truly pursue anything and start building your brand and doing all that, it's really important to find your why, find your purpose of what you're driven to pursue, who you are, do some self-reflection, some soul searching, if you want to, whatever you want to call it, but find your purpose, your why who you are at your core and what it is that you want to do. Stop just looking at what all these other big so-called gurus are doing and trying to do the cookie cutter format of what they're doing and find out who you are and what it is that you want your message to be and who the audience that you want to reach and help is and go after it in your own way. Exactly. 
Because at the end of the day, if you become just a guru groupie, you know, like that's what I call them. Yeah. That person is also going to run out of steam. <laughs> What's going to happen? Because you haven't created something of your own. You feel like you've got to latch on to somebody else. And by the time that happens, it's your time. It's your money. It's your effort. Guru is sipping on a pina colada, looking at his novel in, some <laughs> in Bali somewhere. And you are lost. No money, no clients, no fan base, nothing. So yep. I, I think it's about time to start building and stop just following the main actors. Because you know what the main actors are doing? The main actors go into their own powder room, bro. Yeah. You know what happens <laughs> in their own powder room? That's where they're given the script and they're told, okay, let's do this. We need to change this thing. Everybody else is in the extras room, just waiting there, you know? Yeah. So that's the reason why I said the thing about yesterday. You don't know what's powering the next person. So just do you, there's, there's laws to this thing. All right. Like, yeah. you know, physics laws. Um, there's also laws to nature that if a tree gets enough oxygen, gets enough light, it grows. All right. It's not going to yeah. stop growing just because, Oh, I think it's winter now. You know, let me just chill here. <laughs> now. It will just keep growing. Only us as humans, we're the people that can think towards our own destruction. There's no way a tree up in the Amazon is just going to be chilling going, oh, I don't think that oak tree has noticed me. Oh my God, I'm so depressed today. Am I, is, are my leaves looking green enough? You know, we're exactly. <laughs> you know? <laughs> a tree doesn't have self-doubt. <laughs> you know? Do I look fat in this bark? What's happening? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, you, you know, so we are the only people that think ourselves to dest destruction. Dogs, even they're not even far, bro. You know what they only have to do? You know, yeah. I'll give you an example. You see, I don't know if this is in conjunction with whatever, but I feel like we're giving value and entertainment at the same time. Do you know a dog is the only animal that doesn't have to do jack diddly, but it's the most <laughs> loved animal. Yeah. Let me tell you something. A cat has a cat has to kill mice or snacks or something like that. You know, it has to bring yeah. something or scratch on a pole. It has to do something. A cow mm -hmm. has to bring milk. You know, a goat, you know, we get goat cheese and, and skin or whatever. You know, a pig, you know, a, a pig gives up its life for breakfast every single day as bacon. You know, chickens have to lay eggs. What does a dog do? What does a dog give? It just lies on its tummy and then... <laughs> it provides yeah. cuteness. Yeah, but, you know, do we eat cuteness? Do we... What, what are we... No, exactly. We, we there, there's no tangible cuteness? thing that it gives. Bruh. You see? So, you know, just... We worry too much about stuff. Yeah. <laughs> no, Never you thought know? about a dog in that way, but it's very no. true. <laughs> <laughs> you see, a dog can be anything but a dog. It's happy, it's excited, and you give it everything. You know? <laughs> All right. So we got jumped right into this right off the bat, right off the blocks. We got right into the conversation, which I love, by the way. But just backing it up for the people who are going to be listening, introduce yourself a little bit and uh, <laughs> what it is exactly that you do. <laughs> Sorry if I ruined your show, but this is just... Oh, you didn't ruin anything. I love it. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just a happy dude. And um, <laughs> obviously, this is what I do every single day. I sit around and, and talk about people. And my message really is to help uh, marketers to actually brand, market, and scale their business so that they have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. First of all, you want to make money. And second of all, you want to enjoy making that money because if you don't then you resent it and once you start resenting it you resent everybody else and you ruin it for us marketers so we come in you should see my suit i i do wear my marketer suit and yeah and i've got a hoister for my uh, you know things and i just come in running 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 and i <laughs> first thing i look at is people's uh, uh, facebook who are they creating for? Who are they representing? Second, after that, I then look at their STO. Are they reaching the right kind of people who have the right kind of pain? And are they offering a right kind of solution that's needed? Because some people can just come and try and sell me a pen, but I've got 600 pens. You haven't figured out, do <laughs> I need it? Or do I really need a particular green pen that will make me feel like 
on supporting the environment. So we, we look at all those things and figure out what exactly is your message, who is the market, and then we figure out what media you're using to um, participate with your audience there. Beautiful. Love it. That's awesome, man. How exactly did you get into that digital marketing field and learn all that stuff that you do? Uh, they, they didn't have anything else online. I mean, I tried. <laughs> <laughs> I went in and I was like, what do you have for somebody who's five, eight, <laughs> has got no skills? And they're like, all right, go in there and, you know, you know, just, just go on Facebook. Maybe you'll figure out something. Before I knew it, people started paying me and I'm like, oh, okay. I'll stick around here. Have you ever been to like a, a Ikea or have you ever been to like um, one of those yes. really fancy hotels that has a casino in there and then you keep walking in there and you really get tired? That's what happened to me, you know? A lot of people in <laughs> Ikea, I feel like they got tired of walking in there. They're like, I might as well work here, you know? And <laughs> before you know it, before you know it, I've got a job and I'm now on calls with you guys like that. But I'll tell you something. Your message and your experience has a lot of market value than you could ever think of, all right? So I was brought up in Zimbabwe. I think you can see the flag there. And uh, essentially, um, yeah, moved over to Australia with nothing but a backpack full of hopes and dreams, man. And all I really wanted was to be Chance the Rapper. But that name was taken already <laughs> and it's been double taken again. Now there's an entrepreneur called Chance. And so I can't win. So you know, I moved to Australia when I was 28. And um, yeah, eventually I was working uh, in a restaurant. That was the first job I could do. You know, I always go for the easiest stuff, you know, <laughs> where I don't get to talk to many people. Yeah, so I was, you know, um, started working at a restaurant, but I did not know anyone when I got here, obviously. Yeah. And, um, you know, things were, were not easy. I literally remember the other time when I only had like $100 in my pocket. And that was like a really sort of low point, but I've had 59 other low points, but, you know, we don't have that much time for those. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and then I just started figuring out what it is that I can possibly do, you know, to... Uh, extend my stay. First of all, I did not know anyone. Second of all, I don't want to lie. I'm I'm African. I'm black. So with the culture that I have, with the mindset that I have, and you know, coming into like an um, you know, a Caucasian sort of environment, there's a whole disconnect, and I just felt like you know everything was against me. But no, it wasn't. It was just my mindset. Um, <clears throat> yeah, started figuring out what to do. So I got a house ship. And the guy that I was working with um, used to work for a company and they were looking for people to advertise their goods on social media, you know, like where their clothes yeah. was like, that. yeah. And they were looking for models. And I was like, you know what? I've got a Saturday off. I can come around and chill with you at your work, et cetera. I got there and the guy told me, whoa, you like a natural at this. And I was like, really? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody has ever told me that, you know, before I knew it, you know, I was, you know, you know, hanging around with them and they gave me an opportunity to go to like modeling school. And I did. So that was my first introduction into, wow. So there's another world out there because all I was doing was just washing pot, pots and pans at the end of the restaurant. And that would have been my life had I not opened up my mind to what, as possible, you know, and yeah. I was just thinking, am I just going to keep continue being lonely or am I going to try and put myself in the limelight? And before I knew it, that started happening, but that wasn't easy. You know, it's, it's a whole big thing. I'm not, I don't have like the Kelvin Klein body. I, I, I've got weird hair. So it's very difficult for me to be placed in an ad because you will notice that that is that guy, you know, <laughs> <laughs> they always want generic faces where, you know, you can be in five different ads. So I'm yeah. not commercial. You know what I mean? I'm yeah. not commercial. I cannot be in a Ford ad and be in a, um, a GE ad or a, a Renault ad, you know, so I'm not marketable. So that also posed to be a different uh, fish to fry. So, there was not many jobs, but I was signed up to an agency. So I went back to the kitchen business again, you know? And yeah. um, <clears throat> then since, because of my modeling, 
the um you know the agency got me to to really jump on face, on social media so i started wanting to create a social media profile for the restaurant i was working at because my my boss was constantly grumpy nobody was coming to the restaurant and you know that meant there was no work for me so i had yeah. to create my own job by helping him for free yeah you know all right so i mean that was a little bit of a smart move because then i wouldn't be saying this story and we started winning people over coming in on social media that was four years ago and social media was not like too flooded like it is right now yeah. you know and people were you know responding and liking commenting the food that we're putting out there and he actually then promoted me to be social media manager but on the pay of kitchen boy you know <laughs> I, I, yeah. I didn't mind at least I didn't have to scrub pants anymore or I mean pads ports and pans anymore and um, from then on he started bragging about me to his friends now that was a mistake because one of his friends came and poached me and is like can you also do my social media I'll pay you $200 a week for it and I was like what me <laughs> African boy paid to be on Facebook like yeah yes <laughs> so, so, now that I was getting paid now that I was getting paid out, I started studying this stuff because hey, I had yeah. to represent there was money involved. Yeah. And the ads were not that big then, but then, you know, you had to create all this stuff about a, a, a social media page. And then, um, yeah, I started, I started hitting the big numbers. And before you know it, that now became my side gig. And I was like, why don't I look for other people that I can do social media for? Yeah. And um, yeah. I got another car company and I got another carpet cleaning business. Now I've got clients. Excuse me, I'm an entrepreneur. Yeah. You know, <laughs> can you feel that? You know, and then um, I really started getting into this, you know, and then started working on self development because I now realized that I did not owe what I was doing to just chance, you know, just like you. No, I didn't owe it to you. I yeah. owed it to higher <laughs> being and I needed yes. to give it back. So yeah, in the midst of doing all that, um, really started working on personal development, met my wife in the process. Um, we started dating, got married and we've got an amazing little girl. And yeah, now I'm here trying to help other people, you know, be, do and have a life that's worth, you know, living and enjoyable. That's awesome, man. So about how long after doing that uh, first, you know, social media thing for the restaurant and then getting pulled off by one of the people he bragged you to, how, what was like the time frame from that until you actually started Live Long Digital? Okay. So Live Long Digital is, we just went past the three uh, year mark officially um, in March, I think, but two years prior to that i've only been in australia six years right eh? okay right so two years prior to that um pretty much that's when i was just doing ad hoc stuff up until yeah. and it wasn't even called live long digital until i had to register the company three years ago <laughs> you know, okay. it, was just, it was just yeah coming out You're just doing ads stuff. for people yeah <laughs> <laughs> so Got i freelance. started off with no logo no nothing you know what i mean just it was just me and my charisma so that's why I say there's no way you can say, you know, I'll follow these steps, but you can know how other people got there, you know, and then figure out how you can translate that story into your own story, you know, cause there's exactly. no proven formula. There's just laws, right? I did certain things that put me in a certain place in order to get a certain result. So you need to figure out what certain things are you maximizing your time on? What certain things are you putting your attention towards and what outcome are you hoping to achieve? Because you can only do well if you know where you want to go and then reverse engineer that whole process. Or if you've got some sort of an idea of what it should look like, you know, and I don't want to lie from somebody who, who just came into Australia, didn't even know anyone I now have a lot of celebrity guys that are, you know, that have me on their speed. Dial. I don't know if you've yeah. seen stuff that I do on my Facebook, that radio show where we prank the other DJ and stuff like that, you know, <laughs> things like that, you yeah. know, you know, so you, it's, it's not a formula. It's not, there's no step by step, do this, do this, do this, because you don't have the energy that other people have. 
Do you know what I mean? Like you, you nice, yeah. cool and composed. I'm all over the place, but we're coming, <laughs> you know, we're coming together at a consensus because there's an underlying rule. You've got a message that you want to deliver to your market, whatever media you're going to use, it's going to be optional. All right. So yeah. a lot of our group, a lot of our age group, they are very romantic about the media. All right. And I'll tell you something right now, Coca-Cola, they've been there for over a hundred years. They've had one message. Do you know what their message is? What? Open happiness. I mean, it's not a trick question. Yeah. They say open happiness and it's been going to a market that likes them. You're either Pepsi or you're Coca-Cola. There's no in between. Yeah. You know what I mean? So they know their market and they participate with that market for over a hundred years. And for all we know, they might've just created Pepsi just so that everybody just <laughs> is always the best. You never know these things, but yeah. coming back to what I'm trying to say is they've been doing that for over a hundred years. All right. In that hundred years, they used newspapers, they used uh, radio, they used buses, they used billboards, they used whatever media. All right. And all of that has become obsolete. This is like Oprah right now. I could have been, yeah. you know, this is like uh, the uh, Jerry Springer show, except without the fights. All right. Yeah. But we're not doing it within the comfort of our own homes. We are now opened up to the world. So Coca-Cola is still relevant because they have one message that's going to one market. If they went very pedantic about what media they reached out to their people, they would have been long dead. If you yeah. look at people that look at a, a, a particular media, they die real quick. Kodak, Nokia, all right? But if yeah. you've got a message first, you will transcend whatever time you have so Stop chasing Snapchat. Stop chasing Instagram. Stop chasing YouTube. Stop chasing Facebook. Use them. Yes. All right. And when something stops working, just like right now, we're looking at the biggest internet heist in the entire history of internet. You know, just like the last 25 years. All right. <laughs> All right. In the last... 25 years, Snapchat is being ripped off its feet or the rug is being pulled off its feet by Instagram. Yeah. Only because Instagram tried to buy Snapchat and Snapchat refused. And now Instagram is like, okay, I'll show yeah. you. <laughs> you know? So if you had put all your business, all your nuggets, all your everything else on Snapchat, where would you be right now? Maybe you would still be holding on to a geofilter. I don't know. All right, so you want to really make sure you've got a solid message that goes to a particular market. The media, you can play around with it. Right now, you're going to maybe repurpose this video into a podcast. You're going to repurpose this video into actually a video. You can repurpose this video into Snapchat. You can repurpose this video into a LinkedIn post, into a blog, onto YouTube. Yeah. But I have to sign a release first. Right. But <laughs> at the end of the day, this is, this is, this is what I'm talking about. Yeah. Use media. Don't let it be the be it and end all of your business. I laugh when somebody says, Oh yeah, I'm a Facebook ads expert. And I'm like, do you know Facebook in the next 10, 15 years is probably going to be. <laughs> Obsolete. I didn't say that. If Mark hears you, my friend, and he comes after you, <laughs> and your baby, you know? Yeah, because if you really look at it, it's, it's now just a play on how are you presenting your media? Who is listening and who is watching? I'm paying attention. I'll show you something. All right. This is, I, I'll give this a per perfect example. I'm not, this is a, um, um, a real estate company. Okay. All right. And they're giving this out for free. All right. And these, um, these are like makeshift VR things. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that they win 
10 seconds of my attention. They win 10 seconds of my attention while looking at the new houses. And I've, I have already taken myself off of whatever media you would have been going out throwing ads at because yeah. their message is so strong. That's just media. And it, 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 it translates, it, it translates. All right. So if Dodos, I use that particular example because they're the last yeah. people to change in real estate when, when, when technology comes on board, but they're the first people to actually put it in play and make it really practical. There's going to be a big shift. So going back to where we started, Chance, my daughter is now skipping ads. What's next? All right. She's the new generation, isn't she? Yeah. You know, so if she's doing that and she's taking me out of work, if I don't have a message that's relevant to a particular audience, then I don't know who's going to put it through college. I mean, seriously, I'm going to have to have a talk with her and figure out yeah. what her priorities <laughs> are, you know, because we can't <laughs> sit her down and tell her she needs to watch these ads. Uh, but yeah, no, I mean, that, that's, that's exactly where things are going. I mean, the next evolution from that generation could simply be, all right, this might be a free social media platform. You pay the 10 bucks or whatever it might be a month. And now you can be ad free, you know, and they, they might end up doing that on some platforms as it moves forward, because that's how people have been so conditioned just to skip the ads. They're watching YouTube or a video on Facebook. They're waiting for those five seconds to end so they can skip and they hit the skip button as soon as they can. They're not even paying attention to what the ad's about. I, I, was, I was actually thinking maybe my next job is going to be the guy who strategically puts that skip ad button on, on videos. You know, I'll start selling <laughs> that. <laughs> I'll be like, yeah, this is Brosper here and I'm the skip ad expert. Kids will yeah. never see this coming. Right. Uh, every time they go to press the skip button, it moves to the other side of the screen. <laughs> Watch the ad, damn it. <laughs> but you know what's, what all that is, okay? Because I've worked in the, in the whole creation and creative industry, all yeah. right? Three seconds of an ad could actually be three days of filming. All right? Yeah. Amuse yourself, join a website called starnow.com and then go, be called in for like extra work or something like that. Um, you go filming cut action for a 30 minute, three day skit is only parts that come out for three seconds because they chop it up and then make it look good. Yeah. All right. So you can imagine the 10,000 hours that are going in to an ad just for somebody to see it for one second and already want to click skip. That's exactly yeah. what's happening to the digital marketing space right now. People are putting in hours behind the scenes for somebody to just swipe right. Yep. Nobody wants to Netflix and chill anymore. So you've got to have a message <laughs> that goes to a particular market so that by the time they think, I think this guy is worth my time. Let me bring him onto my show. We now have a captured audience that's not going to be wanting, wanting to be interrupted or anything like that. Because exactly. this is the biggest currency there is now. Eyeballs. If you're not yeah. getting eyeballs onto your content, onto your stuff, I think we're missing out on the boat. Oh, no, you're, you definitely are. That's why targeting is so huge. And that's why staying consistent irrelevant to what the media that you're using is like you said staying consistent with your message is so key because if you're constantly changing your message but you're staying with the same media people are just going to be confused aren't going to know what to think but if you stay consistent with your message and just utilize the different medias then you're going to have success you'll eventually penetrate and have success connecting with your key audience that you're trying to reach good man is this like a low budget video? I can hear the sound effect in the back. Do you have somebody going like this? With <laughs> no, it just started storming right now. It uh, just, just started storming, coming down really hard. So apparently that's what's uh, being picked up right now. Sound effect. <laughs> yeah. We got somebody in the back going. <laughs> yeah. 
No, no. Thankfully, my uh, my my daughter's asleep, so I don't have to worry about that. Earlier, she was out here, you know, right by me while I'm doing work on the uh, computer, just like you said your daughter was drawing. Uh, mine was out here slinging toys around, hitting me with them while I'm trying to do work. Well, but cool. <laughs> it's, it's all part of the thing. <laughs> Great stuff. Cool stuff. So, yeah. And what, what, what is it that you hope to create for your own audience now? I mean, obviously, they've been watching this. They're following you. This is your time to let them know why they should actually care about watching these videos because it's particularly important for people to want to be a part of something so that because people only support what they've helped create. So what is yeah. it that you're hoping to achieve with this chance? Uh, yeah, no, my, uh, my key thing that I'm trying to do is just cut through all the crap, give real authentic truth of my story and the people that I connect with story. You know, don't give any fluff or uh, any just hype, but get to the real truth, be authentic, and just be real with people instead of trying to, you know, just sugarcoat it, glide right past the negatives and the hard times and everything, but rather indulge by sharing those rough times, those dark times, and just be real and authentic about who I am and the people that I connect with. Pretty cool. Because you know what, at the end of the day, Chance, I don't want to lie. People like buying stuff they don't like being sold to. All right? Yes. So what everybody asks is, buy my stuff, buy my stuff, buy my stuff. But if you actually really connect with people, really find the synergy, whatever it is that you've got to say, who you are, where you've been, and then they find, if there's a fine balance, People are more than happy to support your cause. People are more than happy to egg you on. And the only way they can do that is to reciprocate with their credit card. All right? Yeah. So whatever we're going to be doing, we also should remember that these people, these email lists, these followers are people like you and me that have little girls that have, even though the girls are skipping ads, that have <laughs> feelings, that have... Um, hopes that have dreams that want to go somewhere. So stop treating them like a hashtag and actually relate and create and find out if you're actually serving and if you're actually helping them. Because at the end of the day, people would then make that emotional decision either to want to be a part of what you've got or just keep doing whatever they, they've been doing, you know? Yeah. So I really appreciate you, man, for your show. And I really appreciate that it's, it's one of those things that you obviously have a mission. You obviously are going to go places. And I really, really appreciate you having me on this show um, of yours. Last time I tried to um, change my structure in, in my day, everybody got confused. So at least you got, you got to, to, to break my pattern a little bit. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> That's good though, man. Like I said, I was, I'm happy to have you on. I wanted to, I've been a fan of uh, all your live streams. I try to watch them every chance I get in between uh, uh, working on my own stuff here and there when I have the time. I really enjoy them. Like you said, I mean, we, we share some similarities in our viewpoints, but yeah, you're very outgoing, animated, <laughs> I'm more of like a introvert calm with my message and everything. But I really enjoy watching you. You're fun to watch. You're very animated. And, uh, I enjoy your messages and the way you uh, relate your message to the, your audience. No, but then the thing is, I told you, that's the only thing I could do. I tried stand-up comedy, you know, and then as soon as I got there, they laughed at me. I walked out. I was like, yeah, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. So at the end of the day, yeah. you, you just want to do what feels right for you. And like, I always keep saying, man, no fingers are the same height. All right. So what pinky can do index finger cannot do. Do you know what I mean? That's why we yeah. reserve every finger for a particular um, thing. If I put this ring on here, it means something totally different. If I put this ring on here, it means something totally different. If I put my, my wedding band on my pinky, it means something totally different. All right. Yeah. So you want to stay in your lane. You want to do what works for you. And stop trying to be somebody else or oh, stop trying to chase waterfalls. Just stick to the rhythm and the things that they used to. And I know we are being chased and being made to see shiny objects, but they're not worth anything. 
Yeah. No, they really aren't. The shiny object syndrome's the worst. You just keep it's chasing after all these uh, shiny objects and things that look like that's going to be the next big get rich quick or whatever it may be. If you're in something different, it's it's just going to distract you and it's going to send you crashing and burning rather than going towards success because you're going to be so spread thin and just constantly not and so unfocused that it's going to lead you in the opposite direction of the success you're trying to reach. Definitely. And like I said a little bit earlier on that if somebody sells you something and it's for a limited time only, that's as long as it works for a limited time. Yes. <laughs> that's, uh, that's one thing that annoys the crap out of me every time I see you and some of these so-called gurus and other people out there selling courses and they claim it's, you know, I'm only doing this for a couple of weeks when I take it down in a, uh, another week or in a few days, whatever it is, it's going to be gone for good. And then next thing you know, you see the same exact ad like a month later and <laughs> you, you, you I just, thought you was it, gone, brother. <laughs> yeah. It, they, they lose all credibility. It's yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. So how long do you have? I, I know you're a busy man with the schedule. I don't want to keep you past in the, any of your other stuff, but if we can keep going, I'll keep going. <laughs> how long is a piece of string? All right. I mean, obviously yeah. <laughs> we've been, we've been given a lot of value. Um, I might have a hard stop in like say 20 or, uh, and say five to 10 minutes. So yeah, All pretty right. much. Well, to go ahead and uh, kind of wrap it up a little bit then, uh, how, what exactly can you offer the audience and if they want to connect with you or what's the best way for them about finding you and reaching out to you and connecting with you? Great stuff. And that's a really, really good question, uh, Chance. The, the whole thing is I really, really want to work with people that are ready to see legacy instead of being a liability. So naturally, you know, I'm, all, I'm always creating and relating on Facebook, but I'm not here to sell stuff. I just want to see if what I have can inspire you to become a better version of yourself. Okay. So if you then buy things that I'm selling along the way, that's all right. I'm a marketer. I've got a kid that skips ads that I also need to look <laughs> after, you know, just in case you know, all the other kids keep skipping ads. But at the end of the day, we, we, we are here learning. I'm reading stuff and I'm just re-putting it out there. That's my way of learning. Um, all the stuff that I've learned, um, the only way I can retain it is actually by sharing it so that I yeah. don't have space for it anymore. And then I have to continuously give myself. So find something that you can actually do to give out because in life, the things that you give out are the things that you keep. All right. I'll give you a specific yeah. example that has just happened in the last 20 minutes. If I didn't give you my time, we wouldn't have recorded this show, right? This show is going to last forever. It's going to go past us, past our generation and for years to come. So I gave you my time. I get to keep this. If I did not give anyone my time, I've lost that 20 minutes and I'm never going to recover them back again. So, the more you give out, the more you actually do something for other people, you're actually doing yourself a whole lot greater than you could ever think of. And don't go out chasing stuff that's not meant to be yours. Something's just come in your life just to teach you a lesson. So hold on to that, lend the lesson, and then move on. Figure out what exactly it is that you want to do, be, and have, and just go out there and do it like your life depends on it. Um, awesome, and then you could always pay me on PayPal, uh, <laughs> Stripe, you know, credit card. I accept Visa. And <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, whatever it is that you, you're going to do, I'm now just talking to your audience here right now. Your life story and experience has so much value than you can ever think of. Before you go out and try and replicate what somebody else has done, look at where you are. Where you are is probably a mountain of value, all right? I'll give you a very specific example. My two-year-old that skips ads, she, she always likes running whenever, you know, I finish work, I take her on a walk because that's probably how I connect with her and also putting exercise in, in, in the whole process, okay? And 
all the time. If she's wearing shoes with laces, they sort of untangle and then she steps on them and then she hurts herself. Bruises all over the place. She looks like uh, McGregor, who's been in a fight with, um, <laughs> you know, right, with bruises and stuff. So one day I, I got tired of it. First of all, it's a crying, it ruins the mood. And I got tired of it. And what I did that day was just basically taught her how to tie her own laces. All right. That was two seconds of my time, but that's a lifetime lesson for her. All right. Yeah. I, I didn't lose anything by showing her how to do that, but I saved her bruises. I saved her hurts. I saved her hurting herself. I saved her embarrassment because every time you fall, you get embarrassed. And you know what I mean? Yeah. As a kid, the only way is to, to stop crying. All right. But that was yeah. two seconds of my time. Now, can you imagine what you already know that you can impart onto somebody else? just by showing them how they can do something by actually helping them for two seconds. How much of a lasting legacy have you left within that person? How much of a change would you have done with that person? Now go out there and help a lot more people because the more people you help, the more money you actually do earn. Yes. Your, your impact directly reflects your income, your value that you're providing really does, uh, dictate what you're going to get in return it's all about providing value and giving back out to those that are out there and you'll really see a turnaround in what you're getting back in return to yourself as far as the financial side of things that's a ride it man all right man well it was a pleasure having you on where can people connect with you all right uh facebook uh peter rovinga just search I don't know. You, you're going to put it on the show notes. Yeah, so, of course. All right. My name is Prosper, P-R-O-S-P-E-R, Taruvinga, T-A-R-U-I-V-I-N-G-A. You look that name up, I think it will lead you to me somewhere. Instagram, Facebook, on the new social media that's there in the future, on Alien Space, <laughs> on my space, on your space, on our space, <laughs> on every space. Peter Ruiz. Yes. <laughs> well, again, man, thank you so much for coming on. It's been a pleasure. I absolutely love your show. I love all your messages. Like I said, it, uh, it was an honor to have you on. Thank you very much. You're amazing, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, man. You enjoy the rest of your day with your daughter. <laughs>